blood coagulation. Blood remains in fluid condition within the blood vessels throughout life. But when the blood is shed from the blood vessels or collected in a container, it loses its fluidity within a few minutes and gets converted into a jelly-like mass which is called a clot. This phenomenon is called coagulation or clotting of blood. The process of blood coagulation consists of a complex cascade of reactions. Before discussing the mechanism of blood coagulation in detail, it will be worthwhile to study the essential features of various clotting factors involved in this process. Clotting factors The process of coagulation essentially involves a stepwise activation of certain substances, mostly proteins present in the blood or tissue fluids. These substances are called clotting factors and have been given Roman numerals. Factor 1, also known as fibrinogen. Factor 2, prothrombin. Factor 3, thromboplastin. Factor 4, calcium. Factor 5, labile factor or proaccelerant or accelerator globulin. Factor 6 is non-existent. Factor 7 is known as stable factor or proconvertin. Factor 8 is antihemophilic factor A or antihemophilic globulin. Factor 9 is Christmas factor or plasma thromboplastic component. Factor 10 is Stewart Proer factor. Factor 11 is plasma thromboplastin antecedent. Factor 12 is Hageman's factor or glass factor, also known as contact factor. And factor 13 is fibrin stabilizing factor. High molecular weight kininogen, also known as Fitzgerald factor, pre calicrean or Fletcher factor, calicrean, and platelet phospholipids. Mechanism of coagulation Normally, blood circulates in the blood vessels and does not clot spontaneously. Clot formation is initiated under the following situations trauma to the vascular wall and adjacent tissues, trauma to the blood and contact of blood with damaged endothelial cells or collagen or other tissue elements outside the vessel. The process of coagulation involves a cascade of reactions in which activation of one factor leads to activation of the next clotting factor. This enzyme cascade reaction is also called waterfall sequence. The process of coagulation can be divided into three main steps. Formation of prothrombin activator, conversion of prothrombin to thrombin, and conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Formation of prothrombin activator. Two different mechanisms are involved in the formation of prothrombin activator. They are extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway of formation of prothrombin activator begins with trauma to the vascular wall or tissues outside the blood vessel. It includes the following three basic steps. Release of tissue thromboplastins. The traumatized tissues release several substances which are together known as tissue thromboplastin. Activation of factor 10 to form activated factor 10. Tissue thromboplastin combines with factor 7 which is the stable factor to form the tissue thromboplastin factor 7 complex which in the presence of calcium activates factor 10 to form activated factor 10. Effect of activated factor 10 to form prothrombin activator. The activated factor 10 along with the tissue phospholipids or phospholipids released from platelets, factor 5 and calcium forms a complex which is called prothrombin activator. Intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway of formation of prothrombin activator begins in the blood itself following trauma to blood itself or exposure of blood to collagen in traumatized vascular wall. Factor 1 is known as fibrinogen. It is a soluble plasma protein globulin in nature. Its molecular weight is 500,000 Dalton. It is synthesized in the liver. It has six polypeptide chains. Its plasma concentration is about 0.3 grams per deciliter. It is converted into fibrin in the presence of the enzyme thrombin. Factor 2, known as prothrombin. Prothrombin is a plasma protein with the following features. It is the inactive precursor of the enzyme thrombin. Its molecular weight is about 69,000 Daltons. 
It is synthesized in the liver in the presence of vitamin K. Its concentration in plasma of an adult is 40 mg per deciliter, which falls in liver diseases. In newborn baby, plasma concentration of prothrombin is lower. Factor 3. Thromboplastin. It is also called tissue factor or tissue thromboplastins. It is released in the extrinsic pathway of formation of prothrombin activator. Factor 4. Calcium. Ionic calcium is essential for blood coagulation. Factor 5. Labile factor, also known as proaxillarin. It is a protein as the name indicates. It is labile or unstable factor of the plasma. It is required for the formation of prothrombin activator and thus conversion of prothrombin to thrombin in both extrinsic as well as intrinsic mechanisms of blood coagulation. Factor 5 is consumed during clotting and is therefore absent from the serum. Factor 7. Stable factor, also known as autoprothrombin-1 or proconvertin. It is a stable protein synthesized in the liver in the presence of vitamin K. It is required for the activation of factor 10 in the extrinsic pathway. It is not consumed during clotting and therefore is present in serum as well as plasma. Factor 8. Antihemophilic globulin, also known as antihemophilic factor A. It is a protein beta-2 globulin type synthesized in the liver. It is required for the activation of factor 10 and thus formation of prothrombin activator in the intrinsic pathway. It is consumed during clotting and is therefore absent from the serum. Its congenital deficiency causes classical hemophilia, which is an inherited disease in which the clotting time is prolonged. Factor 9, known as Christmas factor, plasma thromboplastin component, or antihemophilic factor B. It is also known as autoprothrombin 2. It is a protein synthesized in the liver independent of vitamin K. It is activated by the active factor 11 in the presence of calcium. It is essential for the formation of prothrombin activator in the intrinsic pathway. Its absence or deficiency causes hemophilia B, which is an inherited disease and is similar to hemophilia A. Factor 10. Stewart Prower Factor. It is a protein present in plasma and is synthesized in the liver. It is activated by an active factor 9 in the presence of factor 8 calcium and phospholipids. Activated factor 10 along with an active factor 5, calcium and phospholipids forms a complex which is called prothrombin activator both in extrinsic as well as intrinsic pathways. Factor 11. Plasma thromboplastin antecedent. It is activated by an active factor 12. It is required for the activation of factor 9 in the presence of calcium in the intrinsic pathway. Factor 12. Hageman's factor, also known as glass factor. Factor 12 is activated to factor 12A when it comes in contact with a negatively charged surface, foreign substance, or rough surface. Its activation in the blood initiates intrinsic pathway by activating factor 11 to factor 11A. Factor 13. Fibrin stabilizing factor, also known as lackey lorand factor. This is a plasma protein which is required for stabilization of fibrin polymers in the presence of calcium. High molecular weight kininogen. It is responsible for attracting precalicrean and factor 11 to the site of reaction with factor 12. This is possible because high molecular weight kininogen, like factor 12, is attracted towards the negatively charged surfaces which provides the site of reactions. Precalicrean also known as Fletcher factor, and calicrean. Pre-calicrean is activated to calicrean by factor 12A, which in turn activates factor 12 to factor 12A. This phenomenon is called feedback activation of factor 12. Platelet phospholipids. Platelets contain phospholipids which are essential for clotting in the absence of tissue extract. Formation of prothrombin activator. Intrinsic pathway. Extrinsic pathway. Let's look at the intrinsic pathway. Blood trauma or exposure of blood to collagen, underlying damaged endothelium, or exposure of blood to electronegatively charged wettable surface such as glass leads to platelet activation as well as activation of factor 12 to factor 12A. Platelet activation 
causes activation of factor 5 to factor 5a. Activated factor 12a leads to activation of factor 11 to factor 11a in the presence of calcium, which in turn activates factor 9 to factor 9a, which in turn activates factor 8 to factor 8a, which leads to activation of factor 10 to factor 10a in the presence of calcium. This factor 10a leads to activation of factor 5 to factor 5a. Phospholipids, activated factor 5 and calcium form the prothrombin activator. Now the extrinsic pathway. Trauma to blood vessels or extravascular tissue leads to activation of tissue thromboplastin, which is factor 3. This leads to activation of factor 10 to factor 10a in the presence of factor 7 and calcium. This activated factor 10a in turn leads to activation of factor 5 to factor 5a. Conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. Prothrombin is converted to thrombin in the presence of calcium ions. Conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrinogen is converted to fibrin and this fibrin in turn is converted to fibrin threads in the presence of activated factor 12 and calcium. Activation of factor 12. Trauma to blood or exposure of collagen fibers underlying damaged vascular endothelium activates plasma factor 12 to form activated factor 12A and initiates the intrinsic pathway. Platelets are also activated. Activation of factor 11 to form factor 11A is caused by the activated factor 12. Activation of factor 9 to form activated factor 9A is in turn caused by the activated factor 11 in the presence of calcium. Activation of factor 10 in the presence of activated factor 8, calcium and phospholipids activates factor 10 to form 10A. Formation of prothrombin activator the activated factor 10 along with phospholipids released by the activated platelets, activated factor 5, and calcium forms a complex which is called prothrombin activator. Conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. This is caused by prothrombin activator in the presence of calcium. This occurs at the surface of platelets which form the platelet plug at the site of injury. Thrombin so formed acts as a proteolytic enzyme. It has been estimated that the amount of thrombin produced during clotting of only 1 ml of blood is sufficient to coagulate 3 liters of blood. Roles played by thrombin are conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, positive feedback role of thrombin, it accelerates the rate of formation of prothrombin activator by the activating factors 8, 5, and 13. In this way, thrombin itself can cause further conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. It also activates protein C. Conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. This involves three reactions. Proteolysis. Thrombin acting as a proteolytic enzyme removes four low molecular weight peptide chains from each molecule of fibrinogen to convert it to into a fibrin monomer. Polymerization. Fibrin monomer polymerizes with another monomer to form long fibrin threads which form reticulum of the clot initially. The clot is weak because the fibrin threads are not cross-linked with each other. Stabilization of fibrin polymers. Fibrin stabilizing factor which is factor 13 is activated by thrombin to form activated factor 13 but in the presence of calcium causes formation of covalent cross-linkages between fibrin threads thus adding tremendous strength to the fibrin meshwork. The fibrin meshwork traps the remaining components of plasma and blood cells to form a solid mass called clot. Blood clot retraction. The blood clot formed at the end of coagulation process is composed of a meshwork of fibrin threads running in all directions along with the entrapped blood cells, platelets and plasma. The fibrin threads adhere to the damaged surface of blood vessels. At this juncture, it is important to note that coagulation is a property of plasma alone. The RBCs and WBCs do not take part in it. They only become caught up in the meshwork of the clot. Within a few minutes after the clot is formed, it begins to contract and usually squeeze out most of the fluid called serum within 30 to 60 minutes. Platelets are essential for clot retraction. 
The contractile proteins present in the cytoplasm of platelets cause strong contraction of platelet spicules attached to fibrin fibers. If a blood clot is kept for several hours, the clot retracts to about 40% of its original volume. Clot retraction is impaired if blood platelets have been removed. Role of calcium in blood coagulation From the study of mechanism of blood coagulation, it is quite clear that except for the first two steps in the intrinsic pathway, calcium ions are required for the promotion of all the reactions. Therefore, in the absence of calcium ions, blood clotting will not occur. Thus, coagulation of blood can be prevented in vitro by removal of calcium ions. Role of vitamin K, liver, and vascular wall in hemostasis and coagulation. Role of vitamin K. Vitamin K is a complex naphthoquinone derivative. Vitamin K is obtained from the food as well as synthesized by bacterial flora in the gut. In the liver, synthesis of the following factors is dependent upon vitamin K. Coagulant like prothrombin, factors 7, 9, and 10, and circulatory anticoagulant protein. Vitamin K deficiency. In the deficiency of vitamin K, prothrombin time and blood clotting time is prolonged and serious hemorrhages may occur. Role of liver. Liver plays following significant role in the coagulation mechanism. Synthesis of procoagulants. It is the site of synthesis of factor 5, 7, 9, 10, prothrombin and fibrinogen. Removal of activated procoagulants. Liver also removes the activated procoagulants from the blood. Synthesis of anticoagulants. Liver also synthesizes anticoagulants like heparin, antithrombin 3, and protein C. Liver failure. It can cause bleeding disorders due to hypocoagulability of the blood and uncontrolled extensive clotting inside the blood vessels where clotting is not only unwanted but dangerous as well. Role of blood vessels. Role played by endothelium, subendothelial tissue, and smooth muscles of the media of blood vessels in coagulation and hemostasis mechanism is summarized as follows. Endothelium. Endothelium plays both anticoagulatory as well as coagulatory roles. Anticoagulatory roles played by endothelium are Smoothness of uninjured endothelial cells prevent platelet aggregation. Endothelial cells produce a prostaglandin which is PGI2, which opposes platelet aggregation. Role in clotting mechanism Endothelium secretes von Willebrand factor. The plasma von Willebrand factor initiates platelet aggregation and hemostasis. Tissue factor is released by the endothelial cells following trauma, which initiates the process of extrinsic pathway of clotting mechanism. Plasminogen activator, which activates plasminogen to plasmin, is also released by the endothelial cells. Subendothelial tissue Subendothelial tissue, which chiefly consists of collagen fibers, plays following roles in coagulation. Platelet aggregation is initiated when blood comes in contact with subendothelial collagenous tissue. Intrinsic coagulation pathway is initiated when factor 12 is activated following contact of blood with subendothelial collagenous tissue. Vascular smooth muscle Smooth muscles of vascular wall play a role in hemostasis by causing vasoconstriction initiated by a mechanical injury to muscles. Why does the circulating blood not clot? We all know that blood circulating in the blood vessels does not clot and that fluidity of the blood is essential for life. By now, we have discussed most of the factors responsible for fluidity of the blood. They are summarized below. Velocity of circulation. Blood is pumped into the vessels and circulated at a constant velocity which contributes to its fluidity. That is why decrease in circulation velocity in certain conditions is associated with the intravascular clotting. Surface effects of endothelium. Smoothness of the endothelial lining inhibits platelet adhesion and thus prevents initiation of intrinsic clotting mechanism. A layer of glycoclax, which is a mucopolysaccharide, absorbed into the inner surface of endothelium being negatively charged, repels clotting factors and platelets and thereby prevents clotting. Intact endothelium acts as a barrier between thrombogenic subendothelial collagenous tissue and the blood. 
Circulatory anticoagulants are the so-called natural anticoagulants present in the blood which prevent clotting are heparin, antithrombin-3, alpha-2 macroglobulin, and protein C. Fibrinolytic mechanism Protein C is a naturally occurring anticoagulant which inactivates factors 5 and 8 and also inactivates an inhibitor of tissue plasminogen activator increasing the formation of plasmin which acts as a fibrinolytic system. Further, wherever there is trauma along with activation of clotting mechanism, the fibrinolytic system is also activated which prevents spread of intravascular clotting. Removal of activated clotting factors Liver plays a role in preventing the intravascular clotting by removing activated clotting factors in the event of onset of spontaneous clot formation. Thrombosis We have studied that physiologically, under normal conditions, the circulating blood does not clot and the clotting of blood occurs only extravascularly when a vessel has been injured and bleeding has occurred. However, under certain pathological conditions, the, the intravascular clotting is called thrombosis and the clot so formed is called thrombus. Predisposing factors Virchow described three primary events which predispose to the thrombus formation. These are endothelial injury. We have studied how an intact endothelium prevents coagulation. Endothelial injury may occur in many conditions. A few important ones are ulcerated plaques in advanced atherosclerosis, hemodynamic stress in hypertension, arterial disease, diabetes mellitus, and hypercholesterolemia. Alterations in flow of blood. Both in turbulence as well as stasis of blood, normal axial flow of blood is disturbed and platelets come in contact with endothelium initiating thrombus formation. Stasis of blood is commonly associated with venous thrombosis, especially in the leg veins after major operations on the abdomen, or otherwise bedridden patients in which muscular contraction in legs and trunk is decreased. Hypercoagulability of blood, which predisposes to thrombosis may occur due to increase in coagulation factors such as fibrinogen, prothrombin, factors 6A, 7, and 10A. Increase in the platelet count and their adhesiveness. Decrease in levels of coagulation inhibitors such as antithrombin-3 and fibrinogen degradation products. Effects of thrombi. Intravascular thrombi may cause variable effects depending upon the size and site. Thrombi cause harmful effects by one of the following mechanisms. Ischemia and infarction. Thrombi may decrease or stop the blood supply to part of an organ and cause ischemia which may subsequently result in infarction. For example, thrombus formation in the coronary arteries may cause myocardial ischemia and infarction. Thromboembolism The thrombus or its part may get dislodged and carried along in the bloodstream as an embolus to lodge in a distant vessel. Examples of emboli formation are pulmonary embolism and cerebral embolism. Prevention of thrombi Formation or extension of a thrombus can be prevented by the administration of drugs which decrease platelet adhesiveness such as aspirin, dextrin, anticoagulants such as low doses of heparin and dicumerol. Intermittent compression or electrical stimulation of the calf muscles is necessary in addition to above drugs for preventing post-operative venous thrombosis.